Today, let's talk about hormone therapy in 2025 and what every woman needs to know about HRT. Hormone replacement therapy, also known as menopausal hormone therapy, has gone through a major reevaluation. And what we're learning now changes everything. The latest research offers a much nuanced understanding of its benefits, risk, and timing, making, making HRT not just relevant again, but a powerful and appropriate option for many women navigating menopause. So let's demystify HRT, because for decades it was controversial. Early findings from the Women's Health Initiatives linked it to higher risk of breast cancer, blood clots, heart disease, and stroke. But now, after 20 years of follow-up studies, the picture is much clearer. Those long-term follow-ups showed no increase in deaths from breast cancer or cardiovascular disease in women who used HRT. In fact, when HRT was started before age 60 or within 10 years of a woman's final menstrual period, it actually decreased all-cause mortality. That is a massive shift in understanding. According to the 2022 physician statement from the North American Menopause Society, HRT remains the most effective treatment for hot flashes, also known as vasomotor symptoms, as well as genitourinary syndrome of menopause. It consistently prevents bone loss and fracture. In other words, HRT isn't dangerous when it's used appropriately. It's powerful and evidence-based. Let's talk benefits because they are real and life-changing. HRT provides dual benefits. First, immediate symptom relief. It's highly effective in relieving hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal dryness that can cause painful sex, joint pain, brain fog, mood swings, and even poor sleep quality. And second, long-term health benefits. HRT substantially reduces the risk of osteoporosis and fractures. It's even FDA approved for bone loss prevention. It is linked to a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. And if started under the age of 60, it may slow calcium buildup in coronary arteries, potentially lowering the risk of long-term heart disease. So let's address the risk because yes, they exist, but they're nuanced. Breast cancer risk is low. Short-term use of estrogen progesterone therapy does not significantly increase the risk, and estrogen-only therapy may actually decrease it. In fact, lifestyle factors like obesity, lack of exercise, and alcohol use often pose greater risk. But blood clots and stroke, well, risk increase with age and in women with a personal history of these conditions, but timing matters. And how long should you use it? Well, the longer that HRT is used, especially beyond age 60 or 65, the risk for breast and ovarian cancers may slightly increase. But again, these are rare and need to be weighed on a case-by-case -case basis. Other side effects can include nausea, bloating, fluid retention, mood swings, often related to progesterone, and breakthrough bleeding, headaches, and breast tenderness. And HRT is not significantly linked to significant weight gain. Now, what about women over 60? Well, here's the nuance. The best time to start HRT is within 10 years of menopause or before age 60. Starting after that carries higher risk of heart disease, stroke, blood clots, and even dementia. But that doesn't mean that HRT must stop at age 60. It can be continued beyond 60 or even 65 for persistent symptoms, quality of life, or osteoporosis prevention, as long as it's evaluated and monitored. In these cases, transdermal estrogen like patches, gel sprays are often preferred. They bypass the liver and they reduce the risk of blood clots and stroke compared to oral pills. But let's talk about the forms and combinations of estrogen because it is available in several forms, including the oral pills, patches, gel sprays, and vaginal rings. But for women with a uterus, progesterone is essential to protect the uterine lining and to prevent irregular bleeding or even cancer. Women who've had a hysterectomy don't need progesterone. But what about the bioidentical hormones? Well, they are chemically identical to your body's own hormones and they're often preferred. But compounded bioidentical hormones raise safety concerns. They're not regulated. 
They may contain impurities and they lack solid safety data. Now, HRT is not for everyone. You should avoid HRT if you've had hormone-sensitive cancers like estrogen or progesterone-positive breast cancer, or if you've had a heart attack, stroke, or blood clots. It's also contraindicated for liver disease, gallbladder disease, unexplained vaginal bleeding, or pregnancy. And at the end of the day, HRT is a personal decision. It should always be made in collaboration with a qualified healthcare professional, someone who can assess your unique history, weigh the benefits and risk, and help you consider lifestyle factors. Once you begin, routine monitoring is the key to track symptom relief and to watch for side effects. But if you're navigating menopause or supporting someone who is, don't rely on outdated headlines. Get the facts. Talk to a trusted provider. And remember that your health decision should be based on truth and not fear. I'm going to link the research to all of this in the video below. I want you to know I'm hosting a webinar this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Come watch. I'd love to teach you even more. And uh, this blog, it's going to be a blog. It will be in my website, 12 steps Come back, visit, follow, subscribe. I will have more tips and tricks for you. Bye.